Hi, my name is Marty Marin. I'm the medical director of the Hypertrophic Cardiomyopathy Center at Tufts Medical Center. I'm also the director of the HCM Center at the Shannon T. Mast Center in Morristown, New Jersey. Today I'm going to be talking about risk stratification in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. What should every patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy know about sudden cardiac death? What most patients with uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy should know about, uh, about risk of sudden cardiac death is that HCM, or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, is the most common cause of sudden death in young people. On the other hand, um, it's only a very small number of patients with HCM who are at risk for sudden cardiac death, which is an abnormal rhythm that's generated from usually the bottom chamber of the heart um, that uh, can be life-threatening if it occurs and is the mechanism for sudden death in HCM. Is every patient with HCM at high risk for sudden death? Well, I think the, the, the issue of risk uh, of sudden death in HCM is, is really that the vast majority of patients with this disease live a normal life expectancy and therefore are not at risk for dying suddenly because of their disease. That said, there are a small proportion or subgroup of patients with the disease who are at increased risk potentially for sudden death and need to be identified as such so they can be protected against sudden death in HCM uh, with appropriate therapy, which almost always includes, in this case, the implantable cardioverter defibrillator, or ICD. What are the risk factors for sudden death in HCM? So the, the, the risk factors for sudden death in HCM really um, come down to the identification of five non-invasive clinical risk markers. Um, the uh, presence of one or more of those risk markers may identify a patient with HCM as being at high risk and therefore triggering a discussion or recommendation in that situation for ICD therapy for primary prevention of sudden death. The five risk markers that we usually rely on to make those, de to, to make those decisions about high risk status include uh, a close relative who may have died from HCM. Two is when the wall thickness of the heart muscle is 30 millimeters or greater. If a patient, particularly young, has had an episode of loss of consciousness abruptly and out of the blue, it's called syncope. Four is when the patient is exercised and the blood pressure either doesn't rise appropriately during exercise or falls or decreases. And the fifth one is the presence of abnormal rhythms uh, on an ambulatory Holter monitor or rhythm monitor the patient usually wears for 24 to 48 hours. And we're looking usually for what is called non-sustained ventricular tachycardia, or NSVT. Those are short bursts of abnormal bottom chamber rhythms that may suggest to us that a patient is at risk for a longer rhythm. So those are our five primary risk factors that really form the basis for helping us identify if a patient is at high risk or not of sudden death. What tests are needed to determine a patient's risk for sudden death? So the tests that we usually rely on to determine high risk status include family history. So we're trying to identify whether or not somebody in that patient's family has died from sudden death, usually at a young age, less than 50 years of age. Uh, two is the imaging, the, either the echocardiogram or ultrasound, or the cardiac MRI, which helps us to measure accurately the wall thickness measurements with 30 millimeters, which is uh, pretty extensive, or greater being a risk factor. And then the ambulatory monitor, which is a monitor patients usually wear, again, for about 24 or 48 hours during normal routine activities, is the third test that we usually rely on. And the fourth test is in most patients, they get an exercise study to evaluate for blood pressure response um, during that situation to determine if it you know, arises appropriately. If it doesn't, then that's a risk factor as well. Does having more than one risk factor mean I have a higher risk? So the, there, there's general, general consensus and agreement that the presence of two or more of the clinical risk markers uh, identifies an individual patient who, at, who is at high risk and should be offered 
or recommended, recommend, recommended in most cases to have an ICD. On the other side of the coin as well though, uh, one of the five risk factors may be enough in an individual patient to put that patient as well into a high risk group to offer ICD. The decision about whether, whether one risk factor is enough to um, e equate the high risk status really depends on what that risk factor is for that patient and of course the context of what's going on with that individual patient, their age, other issues, and that really requires a, a, a decision between the treating physician and the patient usually in that situation. Are there specific risk factors for sudden death that are more serious than others? Well, we have five clinical risk markers, uh, again, that, that we use or rely on to identify high-risk status. Um, I would say that, that perhaps the th of, the, of the five, there are three that stand out as perhaps being a little bit more powerful in predicting future sudden death, and that includes a family history of a close relative who's died at a young age from HCM, unexplained syncope or passing out in the patient, and three would be massive increased wall thickness of 30 millimeters or more anywhere in the lower left chamber of the heart. Those three are our strongest predictors uh, for sudden death. If I have a risk factor for SCD, what precautions should I take and how can I lower my risk? So if, if it's decided that in, in the evaluation that a patient is perceived to be at increased risk for sudden death because of the presence of one or more of those risk markers, um, then oftentimes what occurs is a discussion uh, about a recommendation for protecting that patient for the rest of their life against sudden death, which in this disease is really about, only about the implantable cardioverter defibrillator, or ICD which is a device that's implanted, similar to a pacemaker, into the heart that monitors the heart's rhythm every second of every minute of the day. And if that patient went into one of these abnormal, potentially life-threatening rhythms, the ICD would deliver a shock to restore them back to a normal rhythm, and that would be a life-saving therapy from the device. Unfortunately, drugs um, don't really provide patients enough protection against sudden death um, to be reliable, and so therefore, uh, we really uh, have the ICD as the primary treatment or prevention for sudden death in this disease. Does sudden death in HCM always occur during exercise? Sudden death uh, actually in HCM occurs most often um, during sedentary or non-exercise situations. Um, however, there is an observation that's been made over you know, many decades that intense physical exercise usually referred to as organized competitive sports, is an environment or condition that itself can modify risk. And that's really what we look at that as. It's a modification of risk for that individual patient. So if an HCM patient is participating in organized competitive sports or physical activities that would be equivalent to that, that, you know, that situation or environment uh, can actually increase risk for sudden death with that kind of activity. On the other hand, uh, mild to moderate, usually recreational activity uh, that would allow the patient to remain in, in, in some form of sh aerobic shape um, is permissible, um, and we often encourage that. We don't want to trade one disease for another. So it doesn't mean a diagnosis of HCM that a patient is confined to, to a sedentary life. Um, we just restrict certain intense activities in order to keep patients safe. How often should one be checked for the risk factors for sudden death? Usually, the risk factors are reevaluated annually in most patients, particularly those that are young or midlife. As an HCM patient gets older, um, then the risk for sudden death really becomes low, much lower than younger HCM patients, and therefore <clears throat> the frequency for evaluating the risk factors may become less frequent uh, the older an HCM patient gets. What is a defibrillator? Well, a defibrillator, or ICD, and that stands for implantable cardio defibrillator, is a device uh, that is implanted uh, usually under the collarbone. Uh, the generator is implanted under the collarbone. It has leads that are 
implanted into the heart that are attached to the generator. And those leads that are usually in the heart uh, will monitor the heart rhythm of, for every second of every minute of every day um, and are very sophisticated at knowing when the rhythm becomes abnormal or potentially life-threatening. And when that occurs, these devices will deliver an internal shock to abort those life-threatening rhythms to restore regular rhythm for that patient. How do I know if I should have a defibrillator? Well, the defibrillator, the decision about having a, about whether a patient needs a defibrillator, of course, is one where uh, the treating cardiologist uh, will discuss with the patient and is often predicated, in most cases, on the presence of one or more of the five clinical risk markers that we spoke about before.